The following program is sponsored by Strong Against Cancer and Seattle Children's Hospital. Tonight, the very latest in the quest to end childhood cancer. Because it's really a novel approach and we're doing new things that haven't been done before. The research, the results. Wow, this is groundbreaking. I mean, this is what we've hoped for, for so many years. Absolutely overjoyed, and I'm really happy that I know in some small way I helped make it happen. Put your feet forward. Meet those who are leading the way. And the doctors are like, are you ready to make history? And like everybody was so excited, and I was like, yeah, let's just do this. And you see these families and these patients put their trust in you to say, I hear what you're saying, I know this hasn't been done before, and we don't know what all the ramifications are, but sign me up. The need for new treatments for a cure is urgent. See what Russell Wilson, the captain of the Strong Against Cancer team, is doing to help. And tonight, you can join the team. You can help end childhood cancer. It would help a lot of kids. I really can't think of a better cause to get behind than curing pediatric cancer. Ending Childhood Cancer, a Seattle Children's and Strong Against Cancer special. Good evening, I'm Molly Shen. In labs such as this, the best and brightest in science and medicine are striving to end childhood cancer. It's a quest that has spanned decades, but the last few years have produced stunning results. And it seems almost every day more discoveries are made that can save more kids. Tonight you'll learn the very latest about immunotherapy, a cutting edge treatment that has already saved the lives of children who were expected to have just months or even weeks to live, and how that therapy is now being expanded to hopefully help even more children. And tonight you have a chance to join the Strong Against Cancer team. Your role is critical in getting treatments from the lab bench to the bedside. Those of us who care about kids can accelerate this science and save lives. Together, we can get new, potentially life-saving treatment to more children and faster. Throughout this show, you can call the number on your screen and donate to Strong Against Cancer. Pay special attention to our miracle matches. Those are times when your pledge is matched, doubling its impact. You'll also have an opportunity to join the Strong Against Cancer team through monthly giving. First though, we want you to meet someone who's kind of a star around here. Patient number one, the first patient of the first phase of the first clinical trial that might just have marked the beginning of the end of childhood cancer. Back at age 15, Lindsay of Bellingham had no idea she would one day be a pioneer in cancer research. Her long journey began when her doctor called in the middle of the night with ominous test results. So they called me at like about midnight that night and um, I had to call my mom at work and we didn't know what was wrong. I knew something was very serious. And I said, is this something that can wait till in the morning? And they said, no, we need to see her right away. So I knew something was wrong. Something was wrong. Lindsay had ALL, acute lymphoblastic leukemia. So began an entire year of treatment at Seattle Children's. The chemo was successful, but 13 days shy of her two-year remission mark, Lindsay got what seemed like a cold, but turned out to be the return of cancer. Then, more chemo, so strong this time, it nearly killed her. I could not stop puking. I was in a lot of pain. I got really bad chemo sores that were all the way from like my mouth and out like my GI tract. There were days I couldn't get out of bed. There were days, so many nights that I was scared to fall asleep because I didn't think I'd wake up. But Lindsay persevered. And I knew that I had my mom that I had to be there for. All she went through paid off with another remission. But almost two years later, the cancer came back for a third time, now resistant to chemotherapy. I knew that this time was different. Um, they had started talking about comfort care at home, um, you know, the possibility of not surviving this time. 
But there was an option if Lindsay and her mom were willing to take a risk, a new cutting-edge clinical trial for a treatment that had never been tested outside of a lab. And you try to explain it to somebody, and it just sounds like sci-fi. You're like, wait, you're going to take my own T cells, you're going to do what to them, you're going to re-engineer them, and then you're going to give them back to me and they're going to fight my leukemia. It seemed impossible, but it was hope for Lindsay, perhaps her only hope. We've tried it in the lab. We think it's going to work, but we don't really know what's going to happen. And we think these are the side effects you might experience, but we don't know for sure. Do you want to sign up? <laughs> and then you see these families and these patients put their trust in you to say, I hear what you're saying. I know this hasn't been done before, and we don't know what all the ramifications are, but sign me up. And the trust that they put in you to do it is really amazing. Not only are they really helping themselves, but also helping us and everybody that comes after them. Lindsay became patient number one in a groundbreaking immunotherapy clinical trial. Doctors drew some of her blood, removed and reprogrammed her T cells to recognize and attack leukemia cells, then infused those T cells back into her bloodstream. The doctors are like, are you ready to make history? They're like, everybody was so excited. And I was like, yeah, let's just do this. Like, let's just get it over with. Then everyone waited to see what would happen. A fever would be the first clue the treatment might be working. And every day we would round and we would say, do you have a fever yet? No fever yet. And then one night she got a fever and the residents called me at home and said, Lindsay has a fever, and it was the first time in your life where a patient gets a fever and you're so excited that they got a fever. <laughs> um, and then the next day we came in and we took an extra sample of her blood, and we actually could find the T-cells in her blood, and they, we could find more T-cells in her blood than what we gave her. So we knew that they, these T-cells were growing, they were dividing, um, and we had a lot of confidence that they were doing what they were doing. And then a few days later we got to check her bone marrow and saw that it was in remission. And that's a day that you just can't ever forget. The immunotherapy treatment worked just as researchers had hoped. Patient number one, Lindsay, was cancer free. My girl was going to live. Um, it was after that, you know, it's like, wow, this is groundbreaking. I mean, this is what we've hoped for for so many years, you know, to have, you know, to have your own cells taken out of your body and put back in and work for you and attack only the bad cells and not the good cells and you don't you don't have to your bones are fine it, it doesn't attack anything else that's exciting it was so exciting it still is i still get emotional when i think about it after the successful immunotherapy treatment lindsay got a bone marrow transplant to seal the deal and try to make sure the leukemia can't come back she's got her hair back she doesn't look like she has cancer anymore She's happy to be alive, and she knows how blessed she is. Oh yeah, for sure. I mean, just even today, waking up and hitting that four-year mark, it's like, oh my God, I've got one more year. To me, Lindsay represents the hope um, and the dreams of what we're doing and the ability that we are changing lives. And the fact that she's here today and thriving is a real testament to why we do this work. And, some days it can be really hard and it makes you question why you picked this career and why you're doing this job, but then you get to see that and it makes you want to come to work every single day and just work harder. Now it's time for your chance to join the Strong Against Cancer team. Call the number on your screen to help get treatment like this to more children. If you call in the next two minutes, Fred Meyer will match your donation up to $5,000. Call now. And let me tell you the difference you can make by supporting Strong Against Cancer. I had the privilege of covering Lindsay's story through the years. And when I first met her, she was very, very sick and felt almost hopeless. It was heartbreaking to hear her when she told me once that maybe she was just meant to have cancer. She had almost given up on the possibility of being healthy again. As you saw from her story, Lindsay really suffered through her cancer journey. The treatments to save her life were harsh but she was willing to do anything just to live. And even though she fought through so much pain to get rid of the cancer, it still came back twice, and then even chemo couldn't stop it. 
Still today, Lindsay lives with the side effects of the years of treatment she endured. She says she's not complaining. She's just happy to be alive and to be cancer free. But the fact that one day treating leukemia could just take a few weeks and involve a fever, some flu-like symptoms, rather than the many side effects of chemotherapy, that's pretty amazing. That's the goal. And right now, you can help make that happen. This is your chance to help patients like Lindsay. More phases of clinical trials are coming. Immunotherapy is being tested with more types of cancers. We'll tell you about those throughout the show tonight. And the hope is that with your help, this research can advance enough to make immunotherapy the standard of treatment for childhood cancer. So no child will have to go through what Lindsay did or what some of the children you're about to meet tonight have experienced. Thank you for those who are calling in, especially during this miracle match time when Fred Meyer will match the donations made during these special two minute periods. There will be several more of these miracle matches throughout the show, ways that you can join the Strong Against Cancer team and make a real difference in the lives of children with cancer and their families. Every donation matters. Thank you for your call so far, and thank you for supporting the research that is changing the game in the fight against childhood cancer. Now, don't worry if you didn't get it to your phone in time for that first miracle match. You can call the numbers on your screen anytime during this show, and you'll have other opportunities throughout the show to double your donation by calling during a miracle match. You've heard about how effective aminotherapy has been in early clinical trials. Here's an explainer of how it works. One of the main uh, areas of our research here is to develop basically apps for T cells. Now T cells in the body of a child with leukemia, for instance, are peacefully coexisting with the leukemia cells. The T cells can't really see them as being the bad guy. So we develop apps um, in genetic software, if you will. We make recombinant DNA molecules that we can download into the patient's T cells while they're outside the body. So the T cells have a new app for seeing the cancer cells and being able to attack and get rid of the cancer cells, thinking that they're fighting the, the common cold virus. This lab at the Bentown Center for Childhood Cancer Research is where a lot of the magic happens. What we're getting is uh, blood from our patients and we're harvesting the cells we want. The other side of the glass is what's referred to as the clean room processing suite, where those cells are fed and nurtured. After being carefully, meticulously prepared for their life-saving mission, these reprogrammed T cells, referred to as ninja T cells, don't appear to be much. They can be contained in as little as a half a teaspoon but they are fierce. What our clinical trials have shown us with these reprogrammed T cells in our, in our trials for pediatric leukemia is that you can infuse back into the patient's body just through an intravenous line in, in a procedure that takes two or three minutes, a couple hundred thousand of these ninja T cells. And what they do is that when they see leukemia, not only do they attack the leukemia, but they start growing and they grow to very large numbers. So there's more of the, the T cells to attack the cancer than the cancer. And so when that happens, we see patients go into re remission. And that's really what's been so exciting over this past year to see so many of our treated patients go into complete remissions. Here's a microscopic look at what happens when those ninja cells are let loose. They hunt down, surround, and attack the cancer cells. The first phase of an immunotherapy clinical trial conducted at Seattle Children's had stunning results. First application of this T cell technology um, is for children who have acute lymphoblastic leukemia, the most common form of cancer in children. And when a trial is done with a new therapy like this, the U.S. Food and Drug Administration says do the first trial in the sickest kids. So we enroll children who basically um, had no other options left. These are children that otherwise would be having hospice care in which the leukemia will take a child's life in, in a matter of days or weeks. And these are the ch children that we enrolled in this trial. And we learned that when we infuse these reprogrammed T cells that over 90% of these children with absolutely refractory leukemia went into complete remissions. 
As you heard, almost every child in the first phase of that first clinical trial achieved remission. And that's important because that trial involved children who had relapsed already and were running out of options, running out of time. But in some cases, that remission didn't last. That's why the next phase of this research addresses the children who got into remission, but then lost those T cells. Children like Lucy. Lucy was really sick and she had pneumonia. We finally figured out she had pneumonia and we knew something else had been wrong. We got a phone call, actually Christmas Eve at 11 p.m. Um, saying, your daughter has leukemia, you need to go to Children's right away. I don't know if I'll ever get over that, that initial shock of your kid has cancer. So she had a transplant May 7th, 2015, um, and we were eight months post. We went to clinic for our blood draw the morning of January 5th of 2016, and the nurses said, do you need the numbers? And I said, not unless something's wrong. And we got a phone call that afternoon that her cancer came back, and I think I dropped to the floor. I couldn't even talk. I had to hand my husband the phone. Um, I think every time they relapse, it's harder to treat. Um, and you think about the poison they're pumping into their bodies um, and that we had to have more of that. We were terrified. Just one of the many amazing things about Children's Hospital is you really feel that these doctors are treating these kids like they're their own kids. And if you ask them, if this was your kid, what would you do? They all say the same thing. So I think having that trust um, in your team um, is so important and so remarkable. But it was a little scary going into immunotherapy with all the unknowns. But again, you have to balance the, the hope versus that fear um, and belief. Cupcake. Awesome. Thank you. Ooh, that's beautiful. Since with Lucy, um, the immunotherapy um, and the T cells didn't stick around um, for that kind of appropriate time and they started leaving, um, we had to move pretty quickly. So that day we decided we were going to go forward with a second transplant. And we are now almost seven months post. And so far she's doing really well. I mean, we've had some bumps in the road along the way, but for the most part, she's doing great. And now we just continue to play the waiting game and Stop hope for the best. Smile really big. Smile for the crowd. We'll do some waves. Wave and then return. Blow kisses, Luce. Return. So who's going to be doing your hair? Let me see you. Oh, pretty. I'm kind of jealous, girl. Why? Makeup, hair, fingernails. So who's, are you going to do mine? What about Max? He's going to do his hair. I think it never goes away. Um, but from what I understand, that the fear of the cancer coming back starts to diminish over time. The, the biggest thing right now, because she didn't make it to a year the first time, is we are just hoping to get to that first year point, um, that first year mark, which is will be July 1st. Uh, how's it going? Good. 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 Yeah. How about you? Awesome. Okay. Great Today is a big day, day but you know, we're breathing. One year old bone marrow aspirin. Today's what? One year was July 1st. Bone marrow aspirin okay. today. That's yeah. Okay, okay, let's, let's go. Going. There's that and the map. Hi. hi, how's it going? Say hi, Dr. Dauberg, we haven't seen you forever. I feel like, fine, I was gonna ask you about the possibility, so we've talked about kindergarten. Uh -huh. What is the possibility of trying to get her into a, uh, like a preschool a couple days a week? This summer? Yeah, this summer. Is that okay? Yeah. Oh. 
<laughs> oh, it's a testament to you guys trying to keep life a little normal for her. If there's any normal in this process, right? I try. So. I, I definitely, and I don't know if, if you get this, but I think um, in, in getting to a year, which is a huge milestone to get to, I know things can still happen, um, uh, but kind of just rehashing the last two and a half years, and I've kind of been a mess the last two days. Yeah. It's, been, it's been a long walk. Joining me now is Lucy's mom, Nicole. Thank you so much for being here with us today. Of course. I know that your family has just had such a roller coaster of a journey. What is next on that journey? So Lucy's getting chemo right now just to keep her cancer at bay um, while we're awaiting another new trial. Uh, so the research is happening so fast. Um, they did uh, a target for CD19. Um, right now they're doing a target for CD22, which are proteins on the cancer. Um, this next one we're waiting for is gonna combine both of those. Um, so more, more cancer killer. What would it be like for your family? What situation would you be in if this T-cell therapy didn't exist? Um, so when we sat down with her team, um, right after we found out she relapsed for the second time, um, they talked about this as a possibility and said, four years ago, we would send you home. So we would send, be sent home on hospice with no treatment options left for my child, which I can't fathom yeah. a life without my, without my girl. It's, it, it's not gonna happen. She's strong. She is very strong. Yes. I know you have to be strong too. Yes. This is hard. Yes. The yeah. whole family does. The whole village does. Um, it does take a village, right? It does take a village. Why should other people support Strong Against Cancer? Oh, I think there's so many reasons to support Strong Against Cancer. One, uh, pediatric cancer research is not funded well um, from a government level. Um, I think don't quote me on this, but like four cents of every dollar goes to pediatric cancer research, and that's for every single pediatric cancer, and there's hundreds of them. Um, so that's one reason. I think, too, um, there are so many kids like Lucy who have gone through the regular treatment course. She's been through two transplants. Um, she has had so much chemotherapy, um, and those traditional methods are not working. And I don't want anyone to be sent home because there's no options left for their child. No. No parent should have to hear that. I have nothing left to do. And I know that Strong Against Cancer team, research team, is working on that diligently. I, I think, one, we need more funding. Um, we can't do this without more funding. And the funding isn't coming from the government. The funding is coming from, from private donors. I also think um, this chemotherapy that these children take, it's, it's poisons their body. Um, Lucy had a seizure. She had a seizure on Saturday because of the very thing that they were giving her to save her life. Well, we know that you're in the heart of the battle. We wish you and Lucy all the best, and we're glad that this team is behind your family. Thank you so yeah. much. Thank you. You have heard what a difference your donations can make and the urgency of moving this research forward. It's time for another miracle match. For the next two minutes, Fred Meyer will match your donation up to $5,000. And while you call, let's hear more about the importance of this funding. We don't have big companies that are bankrolling this work. So we have to do these trials ourselves. And you can, you know, the math is, you know, we need about $10 million per new T cell, and we have five or six of them. So you could see that the, the cost for doing these trials that are under FDA approval, uh, that require the same level of, of um, care and quality and, 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 systems that help make it as safe as possible we have to we have to do our trials at the same standards as a big pharma company but yet we don't have stocks that we could sell we don't have investors like that so what we need is is help from the community philanthropy and donating money is one of the things that's the easiest to do it doesn't take a lot of time to be able to say hey i want to contribute and it doesn't matter if that's ten dollars or two hundred dollars it's just important that everybody kind of works together as a community. The research in the laboratory is just accelerating and probably one of our biggest challenges is we have more apps in the freezers here at the Ben Town Center than we have the resources necessary to start the clinical trials. And so that's 
a huge challenge. It's, it's a bit of a frustration, to be honest with you, that now it's not science that is the rate limiting step. It's simply the funding to get these trials running and, and pay for those expenses. You've probably heard that the Strong Against Cancer team is led by someone who's on another successful team. Seahawks quarterback Russell Wilson is the captain of Strong Against Cancer. He's a passionate leader of a cause in which he deeply believes. Hey, Strong Against Cancer donors, Russell Wilson here, your quarterback, your captain of Strong Against Cancer. Um, you know, Dr. Mike Jensen and I, we've been passionate about trying to find ways to, uh, you know, uh, save these young kids. He wears a football jersey instead of a lab coat, but Russell Wilson is a major player in the quest to end childhood cancer. Take a look at the latest amount of money he helped raise. His Why Not You Foundation, along with Safeway, Albertsons, and their customers, recently donated more than one. $1.6 million to Strong Against Cancer. Strong Against Cancer. Gonna make a difference all over yes. the world. However he can, Russell Wilson raises money and awareness. He's a tireless champion of the cause. Strong Against Cancer. Nice. Strong. It's time now for another miracle match. If you call in the next two minutes, your donation will be doubled thanks to our friends at Baird. They will match donations that come in in the next two minutes up to $6,000. So call now. This is your chance to join Russell Wilson and the many researchers and providers who are working tirelessly to end childhood cancer. You too can be on the Strong Against Cancer team. During this time, let's hear more from our team captain about why he supports Strong Against Cancer. You know, I, I think about people's lives. I, I, I get to go to Ch Seattle Children's Hospital every Tuesday and see all these kids and see the sad faces, see some of the smiles when you walk in the room, see some of the tears, uh, see some of the heartbreak. And, uh, you know, there's no, no other option but to help this op opportunity, to help this cause, to help change the world. I believe that Dr. Mike Jensen and the other doctors that have been participating in this, in this amazing cause. Two, three, go Hawks. Go Hawks. Uh -huh. uh, this whole thing with Strong Against Cancer, it's making a difference and I get to see it every Tuesday. You got, you got I could just sit here all day. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> that faith, that belief, and then ultimately the cure that we need to help raise money for, uh, it's, it comes alive, figuratively and literally. And so that's just the best experience that you can ever have, in, in my opinion. This is, what, this is why we're here on this earth, is to serve and give back. And if we don't, it's a shame on us, you know? And I, I think that's the truth of it all. And so I encourage people to, to give to Strong Against Cancer. I encourage people to not just think that this is just another cause. This isn't just another cause. Strong Against Cancer is something that changes people's lives, change, changes our, our children's lives, changes the next generation, the generations to come, and ultimately keeps people you know, living and uh, you know, smiling every day. I'll see you later, okay? I encourage you. I'm gonna push, you're gonna push. We're all gonna push together, and together we can do anything. Strong Against Cancer, super strong. Thank you to those who donated. If you haven't had a chance yet, don't worry. You can call the number on your screen anytime during this show, and there will be other opportunities to double your donation later in the show. Coming up, meet Avery, a little girl who has beaten brain cancer and has a message about an upcoming clinical trial designed to help those with brain tumors like hers. Plus an update on a little girl who came all the way from the UK to get life-saving treatment. And in the process, she captured the hearts of people all around the world. Stay with us. Justin is going home, and he's leaving cancer behind. A new treatment is producing stunning results by harnessing the power of the body's own immune system. But we need your help in bringing this life-saving treatment to more young people. That's why they're strong against cancer. A team of doctors, nurses, researchers, hospitals, companies, and people like you, captained by Russell Wilson. With your support, this will be the beginning of the end to childhood cancer. Erin was diagnosed with acute lymphoblastic leukemia at age two. After remission, her cancer returned, and she needed our help. Her last hope was to travel from her home in England for a pioneering immunotherapy trial at Seattle Children's. It worked. Today, Erin is strong against cancer and busy doing what she does best, being Erin. Learn more or donate at strongagainstcancer.org. Welcome back. 
How would you like to join the Strong Against Cancer Club? By committing to $20 a month charged on your MasterCard, Visa, American Express, or Discover card, you can give automatically every month. There's no need to renew. For less than a dollar a day, you can support this groundbreaking research and help more children who desperately need it. The research on how immunotherapy can treat kids with cancer has been very promising in patients with leukemia. Now researchers are ready to see how that same concept can help kids with brain tumors. Currently, brain cancer is very difficult to treat, as Avery Berg and her family recently learned. The summer before sixth grade, Avery Berg got sick. At first, it seemed like the flu. And eventually she told us she was seeing double. That's when I knew something was, was really wrong. And we took her to Children's. It was the first time we, I'd ever taken either of my kids to Children's. And she was diagnosed with um, an inoperable brain tumor that ended up being uh, stage four brain cancer, highly aggressive, very rare cancer. Considered inoperable because Avery's tumor was large and pressed into critical brain tissue, but attempting to remove the tumor, no matter how risky, was Avery's only shot. We could live with her not walking. We could live with her not functioning, um, you know, on one side. We could live with deficits. It was hard just knowing just that I was smack dab in the middle of my brain and that it, it, I might come out of my surgery not being who I was. Avery came through the surgery with no major cognitive or personality changes. She started seventh grade just over a year after her diagnosis with no evidence of cancer. She is very fortunate to have survived such a rare and aggressive brain cancer. But even the most fortunate of pediatric brain tumor patients goes through the ringer just to live. Avery endured five brain surgeries, six weeks of cranial and spinal radiation, and six months of high-dose chemotherapy. It saved her life, but with it came collateral damage to her developing brain and body. Slower processing speed due to the radiation that she had. She had full cranial and spinal radiation, stunted growth. Um, she'll probably grow about 50% more, if we're lucky, from what she should have. Um, endocrine issues, growth, hormone, you know, her hormones. We, we don't know if she'll be able to have children. Um, there's, there's a lot more. <laughs> she'll have cataracts, uh, for sure. That's one that they told us we can count on for sure. It's really a novel approach, and we're doing new things that haven't been done before. Nick Vitanza is Avery's doctor and a researcher at the Ben Town Center for Childhood Cancer Research. In 2018, he plans to help launch a clinical trial for immunotherapy on brain tumors, using the body's own immune system to attack brain tumors instead of extensive radiation and chemotherapy could drastically reduce harmful, lifelong side effects. Immunotherapy is holds a lot of promise not only to cure kids that we are not able to cure now but also maybe to treat kids with a less aggressive type of treatment you've seen how a patient's t cells can be programmed to attack leukemia cells brain tumors are more complicated they're harder to get to they're usually made up of several different cell types and putting t cells to work inside the brain can spark swelling when we're talking about the brain, we're talking about a fixed space because of our skull surrounding everything. So when you have an immune response in the brain, you want to make sure that it's a response that you can control um, and that doesn't get out of hand where it can cause its own symptoms just by causing swelling in the brain. So I think the two biggest challenges are getting the T cells in this case to the right spot and two, then being able to control any inflammation that they cause afterwards. Yeah. There are challenges ahead, but immunotherapy could be a game changer in curing pediatric brain tumors without the suffering and side effects that Avery and others have endured. There's so many kids that have to go through it and it's so hard, especially that someone like my age or younger would have to go through that. It's just like so sad. 
I really can't think of a better cause to get behind than curing pediatric cancer. That clinical trial involving immunotherapy for brain tumors is scheduled to begin in 2018. Pediatric brain cancer is fortunately very rare. What is unfortunate though is that because it's so rare, very little government funding goes into research for cures. Again, that's where we all come in. It's time for another miracle match. For the next two minutes, Fred Meyer will match every donation that comes in up to $2,500. Call now. And here's more from Dr. Nick Vitanza about why our donations are so critical. I think that we've been entering and for the foreseeable future will continue to be in a situation where the national government cannot fund us as well as they used to. And that more and more of our research funding has to come either from private donations, philanthropic groups, um, or from other private organizations. So we've been lucky here in Seattle that there's such a passionate group of people like our Pediatric Brain Tumor Research Guild um, who's been involved and also individual donors throughout the area. Um, but that continues to be incredibly important for people to kind of reach out, whether you've been affected or whether you haven't. Um, looking for ways that you can support people who are doing this work I think is incredibly important. And more and more of the research that we have to do with funding being so tight is really dependent on those funds. Um, and a lot of the most important work that even I've been able to do over the last few years um, has really been possible through big donations. But even just individual people offering what they can makes a difference. Um, it's unbelievable what the costs are to accomplish even very basic research tasks. So as you're proposing these kind of more these accelerated approaches and these more technical approaches like immunotherapy. Um, there's a lot of work that we have to go into in the lab first um, in making a model in our mice that makes sure that this is the same disease as we're treating in patients um, to then try the treatments that we're doing to make sure that they're effective. Um, and then following long term our results in the lab and really making sure that all our I's are dotted and our T's are crossed so that when we give these therapies to patients we've really vetted it as much as, as much excuse me, as much as possible. And so that's really critical um, to have the funding to be able to do that. Thank you to those who have donated so far tonight. If you missed that miracle match, you can call the number on your screen anytime throughout the show, and there will be other opportunities to have your donation matched. Guilds are another way to get involved and support Strong Against Cancer. The Seattle to Portland bike ride is a challenge. Cycling 200 plus miles takes guts, grit, and perseverance. One group uses this event to help crush an even bigger goal, to cure childhood cancer. You know, on the Seattle Portland, for example, we have Seattle children's therapists who come out and give bike massage, you know, so that you're 50 miles into your ride and you're tired and your legs are sore and somebody comes in, you know, they'll do a, a physiologist massage um, to help you get back on the road. Like we have hot food and we have rest tents and all that sort of stuff that we give as perks. But the real incentive has to be that you're riding your bike to inspire your friends to give money to save kids' lives. Alex Weinert runs the Crush Kids Cancer Guild. He combined his passion for bike riding with the helplessness he felt during his son Owen's fight against leukemia. It took 1,180 consecutive days of chemotherapy. That's every day for three years and three months. In that time, he was almost killed by the therapy uh, several times. And so, you know, the thing was that it's sort of the, the trick to chemotherapy is to almost kill the patient and actually kill the cancer, right? And so in his case, uh, he experienced um, sepsis, which is where your blood gets infected. He had uh, immune system collapse, and then that was joined with like a virus, and so that he couldn't fight off the virus, and he almost died from that. Um, he had liver failure. So there was a series of, of different events that happened that um, there were several times that you know we were, it was just kind of up to his body to see if it could fight. It's awful, and knowing that I'm probably part of the last generation that has to suffer through this is, I mean, I'm so happy about it. I'm just, we've come so far so fast. Owen is 16 now, four years cancer-free, and very involved with Crush Kids Cancer. The success of immunotherapy trials so far gives Owen hope that ending childhood cancer without the harsh treatments he went through is within reach. It'll spare so much pain, so much monotony, so much misery. 
they'll spare a lot of lives. 200 miles is a long distance, but break it down and it can be done. Same thing they say for curing childhood cancer. Every little bit gets us closer. Donations, even small ones, add up, advance research, and save lives. The progress that's been made, you know, just in the time that we've been in the fight has been amazing. And I do think that, you know, people can look for ways to, to help out um, and know with some real confidence that even, you know, a small donation or volunteering or starting a foundation or whatever they do, it really can have a profound impact. And we're starting to see that now with the results of this research. I'm thrilled, I'm overjoyed. Uh, the language I would normally use is a bit too strong for uh, uh, television, but I'm absolutely overjoyed and I'm really happy that I know in some small way I helped make it happen. You too can help make it happen. It's time for another miracle match. Call the number on your screen in the next two minutes and our friends at Fred Meyer will double your donation up to $2,500. We just saw a story about a Strong Against Cancer Guild that uses bike races as a vehicle for raising money. But even if cycling isn't your thing, there are lots of ways that you can get involved in volunteer guilds that support Strong Against Cancer. Here's a list of Seattle Children's Guilds that raise money for Strong Against Cancer. You might have heard of some of these before. Some might be new to you. These guilds raise money in a variety of ways. There are runs for those who like to hit the pavement and get some exercise for a good cause. Some guilds hold dinners and auctions and dress up events if you prefer the glitz over your workout gear. How about a dance marathon? There is of course the Friends of Kathy Gertzen Guild. That's one that's near our hearts at Como TV. Each of these, in their own way, raise money for Strong Against Cancer, supporting and accelerating the research to cure kids with cancer and eventually bring an end to childhood cancer. As you can see, there are lots of ways to get on the Strong Against Cancer team and make a real difference for children and families who are facing cancer. We've heard tonight how important donations are to getting research from the bench to the bedside, getting potential cures to children who need them and need them soon. This miracle match is almost over. Call now to double the impact of your pledge. We appreciate every donation, no matter how small, all adds up. Remember, you can call at any time during this show and there are still more opportunities to double your pledge when you call during our special miracle match times. Coming up next, hear from family members who never thought their child would have cancer. They share their fears, hopes, and dreams for a cure. And an update on Erin Cross, the little girl who traveled all the way from the UK for the treatment to save her life. Erin was diagnosed with acute lymphoblastic leukemia at age two. After remission, her cancer returned, and she needed our help. Her last hope was to travel from her home in England for a pioneering immunotherapy trial at Seattle Children's. It worked. Today, Erin is strong against cancer and busy doing what she does best, being Erin. Learn more or donate at strongagainstcancer.org. Justin is going home, and he's leaving cancer behind. A new treatment is producing stunning results by harnessing the power of the body's own immune system. But we need your help in bringing this life-saving treatment to more young people. That's why they're strong against cancer. A team of doctors, nurses, researchers, hospitals, companies, and people like you, captained by Russell Wilson. With your support, this will be the beginning of the end to childhood cancer. Welcome back. 
here's a way you can support this important cause. Join the Strong Against Cancer Club by committing $20 a month charged to your MasterCard, Visa, American Express, or Discover card. You can give automatically every month. There's no need to renew. For less than a dollar a day, you can support this groundbreaking research and help more children who desperately need it. When a child gets cancer, it affects the entire family. Those impacted by childhood cancer experience both heartbreak and hope. So we were just a completely normal family before my daughter Maricela was diagnosed with cancer. Katie's diagnosis uh, came when she was three and a half. She was um, an extraordinarily normal three and a half year old in preschool. Ellie was diagnosed at four months old. She went you know, in her four years, uh, she went through 28 rounds of chemo, um, 17 surgeries, and 42 days of radiation. Typical day, field trip to the zoo, everything's great, and all of a sudden she says she just doesn't feel right, her body doesn't feel good. I think it was five o'clock the next morning we found out that she had cancer. I, it was just awful, because she was just a baby. When you hear of the word cancer, you automatically think death, and what our emotions were going through is we can't lose this baby of ours. She was scared. The first, the first words that came out of Sienna's mouth when she found out that she relapsed was, am I gonna die? And no seven-year-old should say that, or wonder that, if they're gonna die. And I just started screaming. I said, she can't have, she can't have cancer. That's cancer, right? And I don't want her to die. I just kept screaming, I don't want her to die. The journey itself is hard, but the way it ended is even harder. And, you know, losing a child is one of the worst things a parent could ever go through. Um, your whole world's turned upside down. Think deeply about what this would feel like if um, it were your child or your grandchild. And kids' cancers are so underfunded um, that this research, every dollar really does make a difference. When you lose a kid, your biggest fear is them being forgotten. I need for people to remember her, to remember her journey, to remember her spirit. Just I hope that some of the trials that she participated in will change lives for other kids battling this. I want to say to all the doctors and researchers and nurses that you are changing the world. And because of you, maybe I'll see my daughter graduate. Maybe I'll see her get married. You're heroes. You're heroes. We need people to step up and to start moving mountains for these kids. I'm here because I can't watch any more moms bury their children. Now is your chance to help those families, to support the game-changing research that's already saving lives. Call the number on your screen, and for the next two minutes, your donation will be matched by our friends at Fred Meyer, up to $5,000. Community support is critical in getting potential cures from the lab to the patients who desperately need it. Here is more from families affected by childhood cancer. He was diagnosed on May 2nd of 2014, around 10.30 at night. Um, I'll never forget it. Earth shattering, I mean, life changing. I can't even, there's so many like strong words that come to mind. It, it changed the trajectory of my family's whole life in just one, in one day. Um, you know, everything that seemed really important before all of a sudden wasn't important. Uh, you know, your family and your kids are everything. So you expect to hear that kind of news about an older person and to hear it about your own kid. Again, I don't wish that moment on any family. You know, hearing that your child has a brain tumor, your first thought is, you know, no, not my child. And no, because when you think of brain tumor, you think he's going to die. Is my son Henrik going to die? And it, it was so traumatic that I, I don't know how we coped, we just did. Um, the help from my side of the family in particular, um, grandparents, brothers, um, was critical. We couldn't have gotten through it with, without them. I always say the day before August 14th, 2014, I wasn't a cancer mom either. I would have never in a million years thought that this would be me. And 
I don't think anyone does, but you can only hope that when something like this happens to you that there are people like you out there fighting for my kids because you just never know and you never want it to be your kid, but you never know. Thanks to those who have donated. You can still call the number on your screen at any point during our show. And you'll have one more chance to double your donation. We have one more miracle match to come. A little girl from England needed a miracle, and she traveled all the way to Seattle Children's in hopes of finding it. It seemed all the world was watching to see if immunotherapy would work for Aaron Cross. If they gave out prizes for traveling the farthest for cancer treatment, six-year-old Aaron Cross might just be in the running. Erin and her parents came to Seattle Children's all the way from Chester, England. The prize they're seeking is the chance to save Erin's life. This will mean I fell off in the end. Try to get higher. That's quite funny. At age two, Erin was diagnosed with acute lymphoblastic leukemia. Two and a half years of chemotherapy, and it looked like this might be behind them. And then Erin blossomed into a beautiful, healthy girl at school and was doing really well. She was getting um, awards from the head teacher and making loads of friends and just generally getting back to normal, having a normal life. Um, and then unfortunately, 11 months off treatment, we just went for a normal clinic appointment and had a blood test and then got the phone call that night that um, there was something abnormal in her blood. And over the next couple of weeks, we got to find out that she'd relapse. Treatment was going well at the start, the relapse treatment in the UK and by week five of the therapy they sort of realized that she wasn't responding to chemotherapy as well as she should. Erin's cancer was back again and this smiling bubbly little girl seemed out of options. But Erin's mom had heard about a clinical trial at Seattle Children's in which T-cells were taken from a child's blood, reprogrammed to destroy cancer cells, and then infused back into the child. In the first phase of the trial, 93% of the children with relapsed leukemia achieved complete remission. Erin's was a good fit for the second phase of the trial. It's gonna be gentle, gentle. So here she is, at Seattle Children's, preparing for what her family hopes will work as well for her as it has for the other children in the clinical trial. Just some monkeys. Is that weird? Monkeys. Is that surprising that there's monkeys in your ears? Never had monkeys before. A few days after her sixth birthday, Erin's T-cells are finally ready. It's everything. It just it means we're getting our little girl back. The team from the lab arrives in her room and prepares the product for infusion. The infusion itself takes just minutes. The next several days were tough on Erin. She developed a fever, which is a positive sign that the reprogrammed cells are doing their job and attacking the cancer cells. But the fever got so high, Erin began having seizures. I mean, for me, it's the most scared I've been in my life. I thought we were going to lose Erin. Then it felt to us like within seconds, that team of about eight or nine doctors were around the bed, like working on it to, to stop the seizure and, uh, and save her life, because obviously she stopped breathing because the seizure was so bad. That one is... But Erin pulled through, and the immunotherapy treatment worked. Erin is in remission and feeling good. This little girl who was once out of options now has no sign of cancer. So are these all going to go into a suitcase? It's been a very long journey for this family, one that brought them all the way from the UK. They prepare to return home to England, where Erin will get a bone marrow transplant to hopefully seal the deal and keep the leukemia from having any way of coming back. This family can now dare to see a future beyond cancer. They can dream of a long and healthy life for Erin. Put your feet forward. I think she's going to change the world. <laughs> yeah. I really do. Yeah, for me, she could do it. anything that she wants to do. <laughs> she's a real character and she changes people. You know, people fall in love with her. She has a, a real big impact. So. I don't know, I could see her taking that forward into you know, her adult life and making a big difference. We're happy to tell you that Erin is doing great.
Erin recently turned seven and just celebrated the one-year anniversary of her T-cell infusion. Her hair is growing back, and she's got a couple new front teeth coming in. And we just can't believe that we, we've got to this point. It, it, it's amazing. It's all thanks to everyone at Seattle Children's, Dr. Jensen and Dr. Gardner, for, for getting Erin to this point. Her parents say Erin danced through this past year quite literally. She's quite the little entertainer. She even got to meet the Britain's Got Talent judges and press Simon Cowell's buzzer. Just uh, having lots of fun and now looking at getting back to normal and getting Erin back to school. Um, and it's all thanks to the team at Seattle Children's um, for getting us to this point. Um, we can never thank you enough. Um, just, just thank you for everything you've done for us. It is so good to see how well Aaron is doing. Donations helped make that happen. Now is your last chance during this show to help children like Aaron. You can be the hope when another family hears your child has cancer. This final miracle match is once again sponsored by our friends at Fred Meyer. And for the next two minutes, they will match your donation up to $5,000. You can double the impact of your donation by calling in the next two minutes. Please call the number on your screen and help get these promising treatments working for children for whom time is a factor. Let's hear more from families affected by childhood cancer. Strong is Mason, this guy right here. Strong means to me uh, never losing hope and never losing faith. Strong, Strong is Henrik. Henrik. Strong is awesome Avery. Strong against cancer for me means that Someday, if we collectively work together, if we're strong together, we have the opportunity to end pediatric cancer. Strong is this chick right here. Sienna's strong because she has to persevere where nobody should persevere. Strong is definitely Annalisa. She is the strongest person I know. She is my hero. Strong is all the kids with cancer who are battling or have gotten past cancer because they are strong now and will always be strong. Strong means to me never giving up. Strong is me. <laughs> Strong is my baby girl. And even though my child's not here today, I will continue to fight for all these kids. And I'm so grateful that you're all willing to fight for them too. Strong is community. Everyone banding together. Raising support to make a difference in our community, in your community. You know, one day it could be my kid, it could be my child, or it could be yours. Let's make a difference and let's be strong together. We want to sincerely thank you for your generous donations tonight, for supporting Strong Against Cancer and being part of the quest to end childhood cancer. We appreciate all of the donations and all of the ways you support these children and those who are working tirelessly to help them be strong against cancer. I'm Molly Shedd. Thanks for watching and good night.